If I got a penny for every single time somebody said that Tesla is a car company, I would be the first trillionaire in the world. <laughs> you know what I mean? Tesla is not a car company. And after 1010, they have solidified their intentions of what they want to become in the future. An autonomous vehicle company, Robotaxi, and a robotics company. And they have put and laid down the groundwork for it. And it's a sheesh moment. Yes, at the moment, we're all focused on deliveries to see what their EPS is going to be. But in the long term, in the grand scheme of things, these don't matter. Recently, Tesla at their Giga Texas factory put a fork, a 20 foot high fork in the road. What does this mean? Well, this is an awesome thread that I read or an awesome post that I read saying or explaining how Tesla is morphing out to become a car company, out of a car company, um, becoming more of an AI robotics company. I made a video about this, I think it was like six months ago, how Tesla is morphing or changing into a whole different company. You guys can check the video here. The data is showing that. Yes, at first it's going to be energy, then we're gonna see the FST and Robotaxi come in and dwarfing it. But this post, this post explains it very well and I do want to go over it with you guys because it's a sheesh moment and explains exactly why Tesla is no longer a car company. Smash that like button, let's go! You've seen Elon carrying a sink into Twitter to make a visual pun, let that sink in. Now we have a 20 foot high fork in the road right in front of the newly added section to Giga Texas. Why? The newly added section contains Tesla's new multi-billion dollar supercomputer that will be used to train autonomous cars and robots, which is absolutely impressive. It's a sheesh, it, it, it is a sheesh building and a sheesh moment. It's a building that has nothing but supercomputer clusters, just insane, mainly for FSD, mainly for autonomous vehicles and maybe with the bot as well. But that's what it's for. I don't know any other car company that has that, but that, that's a sheesh moment. Moving on, Elon is visually telling us that Tesla, this $700 billion market cap company, is pivoting away from being an EV manufacturer to being an autonomy manufacturer. I don't think people have truly grasped the implications of this, hence Elon's fork in the road and Tesla's 1010 We Robot event. And he's right, majority of people that witnessed 1010, they were, <laughs> they wanted to see the affordable vehicle, which goes against exactly what RoboTaxi event was supposed to be. Nonetheless, that event was a very important one because it shows you where the shift is going in Tesla. Then he continues and says, let me paint a picture of what the other direction in the road fork would have looked like. After the Model 3 and Y, Tesla could have decided to turn into GM of EVs and broaden out their product line, bringing out traditional SUVs, small, medium, and large, and lots of cars in the 40 to 60,000 price segment. Honestly, that's what I expected and hoped they would do too. Many billions of dollars would have been spent building new factories. And we did have this anticipation that two, three years ago, when they were selling EVs like hotcakes, that we thought that they're going to continue building gigafactories once every year. I mean, right now, even Giga Mexico is on pause. So things have changed. Things have changed. Margins would have been compressed. And in the end, you'd be fighting tooth and nail against non-profitable Chinese EV makers. I'll remind you that GM's market cap is 55 billion versus Tesla's 700 billion. In Pennsylvania yesterday, Elon said that Tesla wouldn't succeed without solving autonomy. And he's looking directly at the market cap disparity when saying that. And by the way, guys, if you guys haven't seen that video of him saying these things, check the video right here. Sure, Tesla could have become the GM of EVs. And at one tenth of the market cap, no shareholder would call that success. Facts. Absolutely facts. Hence, the complete and utter pivot towards autonomy. So what does this bold new path at the end of the fork look like? Nothing less than reshaping all vehicle transportation. Now this is the paragraph that I want you guys to really pay attention because this is the goal of Tesla and it's absolutely serious. And this is why every other automakers has to have some sort of autonomous capabilities, AKA license Tesla's FSD. Check this out because it's a sheesh flipping paragraph and I 100% agree with it. Do not make the mistake of thinking CyberCap is just an Uber Lyft competitor nibbling away at their market share. Oh no. This is an obliteration of the market and then an obliteration of the rest of the vehicle market. That's absolutely fact, guys. The fact, let me put it into perspective for you guys, okay? A CyberCap per mile is gonna be, after taxes and everything, 30 cents. That's what's going to be, according to Elon, on 1010. 30 cents. That means, if you're taking a ride every day and you're away, let's say, you know, 
10 miles, not five miles. You're, you're, for, you're away from work 10 miles. That's only $3, $6 both ways. It's insane. Let's say you want to go to a cottage that's like 50, 60, let's say 100 miles up north. Let's say, right? 100 miles up north. That's $30 one way, $60 the other way. Now, imagine when you had to rent out a car, put gas in it. I mean, that's that's pretty much the insurance of, of that car if you rent it out, which is insane. Like when you when it's that cheap and you sit back and you look and even and that's if you're paying for both people. I mean, if you're going with a friend, that's split between two. So it's even cheaper than that. But when it's this cheap, why do you want to own a car? It's insane. Whole Mars said it perfectly right here. He said that owning a car requires big upfront payment, sales tax, depreciation, yearly license and registration, stickers, pay to park it, pay to fuel it, pay parking tickets and speeding tickets, pay for car insurance, pay for maintenance, clean, wash the car, new tires, pay to fix things that break. Yuck. But hailing a ride, just pay one low price. You're eliminating at least 13 things for one thing at a low, low price. It's just, I just don't see any other way. You know what I mean? It's just, why would you want to go through all that stuff? For majority of people at least, right? So this is, I 100% agree with the statement and this paragraph is absolutely facts. He moves on and says that the two-seater cyber cab is cute and all and functional. 85% of vehicles drives have one to two people in them anyway, but the only thing that matters about it is the price per mile, 50 cents. Now he's using 50 cents who goes low as 30 cents, but 50 cents is like the max, max you would pay compared to two to three dollars for Uber. That's market obliteration. Facts. Absolutely facts. The future as painted during We Robot was one where car ownership isn't a thing anymore. Yep, you know that meme that goes like in the future you're gonna own nothing and you're gonna be happy about it. But hey, you're saving a whole bunch. You're saving a whole bunch of money. This is pretty much what it is. There are so many robot taxis around that hailing one is trivial and convenient. People will literally install wireless car chargers in their now useless driveways just so cyber cabs and robovans can charge there, ready to be rented out by the homeowner. Robovans will be customized as RVs complete with toilets or a mobile office with coffee makers and desks. Driving two hours to a meeting will be productive as you sit at your robovan desk with a big screen and Starlink internet. With robotic taxi, you don't feel a rush loading and unloading your vehicle. There's no driver whose time you are wasting. Oh my God, the future is looking insane. Now, transportation is going to change forever, for sure, 100%. I don't care what anybody says, 10 years, 15, 20 years down the line. If you have a kid right now and they're just born today, they probably won't, not probably, most likely they won't even need a license to drive because why would you want to drive when it's so much cheaper to use robo taxis? It's insane. And robo vans. It's crazy. And in fact, in the next paragraph, he talks about this driver's license stuff, saying that, that, that not many people are getting it anyways. Teenagers are already not getting driver's license. In 1995, about 64% of 16 to 19 year old teens had their license. But by 2021, this number had fallen to under 40%. I would assume Uber and Lyft had a lot, of, a lot to do with this. But if that's the case, the robo taxis will have everything to do with this. Currently, Uber Lyft isn't as cheap as owning a car if you drive regularly, but at cyber cab prices, it will be. Facts. Tesla has truly chosen a different path, no less dramatic than Apple chose when it pivoted towards handhelds and away from desktop PCs as their core product. If successful, Elon will completely reshape all vehicle transportation. Remember, Tesla semi trucks are coming too. I'll expand, I think he meant expand here, on more of what that looks like in the future posts. Visionary leaders like Elon and Jensen of NVIDIA see things so much earlier than anyone else. Jensen created CUDA in 2006, which enabled researchers to use GPUs to revolutionize AI and Jobs pivoted Apple towards mobile devices in the early 2000s. Similarly, Tesla's Model S had just started its first year of volume production in 2013 when Elon announced it would have autopilot. 11 years later, we are just starting to see where this will lead and then wait until full stop driving. I mean, 2025 unsupervised. It's going to be insane. And then Elon commented here saying a fork in the road, confirming it, which is absolutely a sheesh moment. But this is the future of Tesla, guys. And this is the reason why I went all in Tesla stock literally back in 2020 when I sat down and mapped out how these autonomous vehicles and FSD is going to bring the best out of Tesla, how it's going to change everything, how it's going to become the world's most valuable company one day. And seeing it now, people realizing it and seeing a dedicated vehicle and a van for it and seeing the progress of actual full self driving is absolutely a sheesh moment. And I have, I'm, I've never been this confident before. And if anything, if the stock crashes next week where 
we have the earnings call. I'm going to buy more shares 100%. No questions asked. But until then, let's focus on Q3. Here's my prediction for it. I do think it's another miss, but it doesn't matter. I think earnings call is more important. But here's my breakdown. Check it out, guys. Subscribe. Get your I Bought the Dip t-shirt. And I shall see you guys in the next video. See ya.